Hi, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle, and today I want to review and kind of go over what I really like and what I kind of don't like about lightning literature and composition grade three. If you're new here, I have a eight-year-old daughter, a four-year-old daughter, and a one-and-a-half-year-old son. Obviously, I'm using this for my eight-year-old daughter. Now, if you want to see a thorough, like, in-depth flip-through, Tanya from Project Happy Home has wonderful thrift flip-throughs of different levels of this. So I encourage you to check out that channel if you want to see more or a specific age group. But I'm going to briefly go over what I like and then I'm going to turn the camera around and show you specifics of it. So one of the biggest things I love about this program is that the suggested books that you use with it are age appropriate for the children so they can read it by themselves. So I don't have to read aloud. It gives you the option of doing that, of course, if you prefer to read aloud to your child, if that works better for you. But it takes one less thing I have to do away. My eight-year-old really enjoys reading. It's something she's passionate about. So it was nice to have a bunch of resources of books to point her to. Now, the reason I went with grade three instead of grade two is she honestly read most of the books for the program that would be for grade two. And she's always been kind of advanced in that area. So I figured grade three would have been a better fit for it and it's worked out really well. So for example, the first book we read was Sarah Plain and Tall. Then we read Rickshaw Girl and now we're working on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. What I really like is that it's broken into manageable chunks. You know, obviously these aren't large books in the beginning. So it's maybe I think two chapters a day, which is, a handful of pages, it's not that bad. Even with Charlie and Choc Chocolate Factory, it's a larger chapter book, of course, and you know, it's got normal small print in it, it's not a little kid book. But it's just, again, broken into chunks where it's one or two chapters a day, and it's not overwhelming in any means. So I'm gonna flip you around and show you some of the specifics I really like. All right, so this is what you get. You get a student workbook, and a teacher guide. What I really like about this program is obviously you need the books that accompany it. And there's a bunch of them. These are the three we've gone through already. And then you just need a notebook or a composition thing, something to write your work in. So let's open up the teacher's guide. And again, if you want a more thorough flip through, check out Tanya's video, but this kind of gives you an overview. And with the books, I just got them from thrift books. You can certainly get them from your library as well. Usually, the most I think you use a book is maybe two weeks, which would obviously be fine for library checkout times. But it just gives you an overview of how to use the program. And then goes into specific weeks. So I'm gonna go to week three. So this is the beginning of the rickshaw girl. So again, it gives you the what you're gonna go over, anything you might need. And then it goes straight into day one. So for day one, you're gonna go into read chapter one and two. And what's nice is it gives you kind of comprehension questions after your child reads to ask them. And what's nice is it also gives you the answers. So for example, I read this obviously when I was younger, but I don't remember every specific detail of it. So I have a vague idea of what happens in the book, but for the answers being there, it helps me understand what the question is looking for exactly. And then it goes into, after they read that, you go over the comprehension questions, it goes into your workbook pages. Again, these are extremely manageable pages. This is day one, and it's talking about action verbs. And what I really like is that it relates the grammar to what you're specifically reading. A lot of the sentences, as you can see here, that they'd be working with and figuring out whatever it's asking are directly from the book. I think a lot of curriculums will pull sentences from popular books or great books and have your child work with that. But as we know, if a child has a basic knowledge of anything, they're gonna grasp the concept better. It's gonna stick better. So because she read this chapter and they're pulling specific 
sentences from that chapter to work with and under, to understand what an action verb is, it sticks so much better. And again, it's in manageable, manageable chunks. This is day one, that's it. So she would have to go and do the worksheet here, just like it says, and it gives you an overview of what the worksheet's going to cover, and it also gives you the answers here. So if you ever have a question or you're not sure as an adult, it's nice to have the answers as well. And then that will be all for day one. So you would come over here and all you have left for day one is your composition then. So it's telling us you're gonna do a how-to paper. In the book, the uh, girl is painting El Pena, so she's, that's why you're doing a composition on how-to. And again, the writing is broken into extremely manageable chunks. My daughter loves reading, but writing not so much. And this was easy for her because it's done in a way where it's not overwhelming. You don't feel like you have to write an entire paper in a day. So for example, the first day, all you have to do is choose what you're going to write your paper on. It could be on how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. My daughter chose how to change a diaper. That was her idea. And so the first thing you have to do that day for composition, the only thing you have to do is come up with your topic. Again, you go into day two now, you read chapter three and four, you have your discussion comp uh, comprehension questions, then you go into your grammar and mechanics, and again, you just go into your day two, and again, this was talking about, I believe, uh, verbs and adverbs, yes. So verbs and adverbs. So again, they're pulling sentences from the actual text that they were reading, and then it's just very relatable, the sentence diagramming, which I think is extremely helpful, especially for my daughter, understanding how sentences work and what an actual adverb is. I feel like so much we're, we always give our kids a simple definition of what it is, and then they're supposed to just run with that and get it, but this is actually applying it. So that's all you have to do for the worksheet. And then you'd come back over here, same thing, it's got the answers here for the worksheet, and then the composition. So today you're going to brainstorm a list of verbs for the steps you have. So my daughter wrote out the steps of how to change a diaper. So she wrote them out in a logical order. And then, so we took each step. For each step, we picked a verb. So obviously the first step of changing a da baby's diaper is you wanna put them on some kind of changing table. So her, she would put her verbs here for every single thing every step of this process, which made it, again, extremely manageable. It's not overwhelming. And that's all she had to do for day two, for her composition. Again, you go into day three, you read chapter five, chapter six. You do your comprehension questions or, and again, you have the option of writing those down, but I just do it orally with my daughter. And then you go to your workbook page for day three. And it's just doing these synthesis puzzles. And it's a really colorful, engaging way to talk about grammar. So she would do that, and then she would work on her uh, composition. And for that, you would take your verb list that you made the previous day, you can take your verb list, and then you're going to add an adverb to every verb you have. So it's really building up to the process of writing that paper. So, and it's only a four day week. They give you that fifth day to do any leftover work you have, if you need to work on it, or if you just want a free day. We usually use it as a free day. So day four, again, you'll read chapter seven, chapter eight. It'll point you to your workbook page, which is just understanding what predicate and how to diagram predicate and subject, which again is extremely helpful breaking down the sentence so they understand. You're gonna be a better writer if you can understand these concepts. And honestly, I was never taught these concepts in public school. And I'm not a very good writer. All right, so after you do your workbook pages, again, you have your um, answers here, and then you do your composition. 
So for this day, you just put the appropriate order of your um, how-to paper using your verbs and adverbs. So again, really simple. It's building you up to writing that paper. And you can see we're done with the first week and we're not even writing that paper yet. We're still working on it. So it's not overwhelming. And again, go into your second week, same concept. Read two chapters, do your workbook pages. So this would be the second week. So you're working on explaining the difference between nonfiction and fiction writing. Again, you're going over verbs and adverbs. You're writing your own sentences for it. You're continuing sentence diagramming. And then what I really like, so again, those will be done throughout the week. So each week will have a different thing. And again, you're working on that composition every day a little bit. So one of the days you're working on transition words to go from the next thing. Towards the end of the week, you'll start your rough draft, which what my daughter does for that, obviously her rough draft is here, but for her actual paper, what I end up doing is I will, she'll write up her rough draft of something. For example, uh, this was her, her previous one. This was her outline for something. And then her rough draft. So she wrote up her rough draft. And what I will let her do for her final draft is I will let her actually do it on the computer. Because for some reason, the concept of writing, physically writing, isn't as fun as just typing something up. So I will open up Canva. Let me see if I can find it. I will open up Canva. I will let her type it up. And then she can add whatever graphic she was. So this is her rough draft that we worked on. And then she obviously put in her transition words. So, but this makes it more fun and more interesting for them, which I think is important because if it's, I don't think something has to be fun for your child to learn it, but it certainly makes it a little easier. So she enjoys doing the, the final draft. She's been doing the rough draft. She writes it down in her composition notebook, and then she'll do her final draft on Canva, or it can even be Word, whatever you have, and add some fun graphics. And we actually have this hanging over my son's changing table, which is funny. And then when you're completely done with the book, it gives you a literature discussion. So you go over and I'll bring you the board here. So you go over the theme, the story, the characters, the setting, and the external details. And you'll do this for every single book when you're done with it. And it's kind of just a review and you get to talk about these concepts with your child already knowing the story, knowing the book, and being able to relate those. So for example, we just get out a whiteboard and I write down the theme, the story, the character, all those things, and then we talk about it and I write down the information she, we just discussed. So she's understanding what these elements are because she can relate it to the story that she just read like symbolism, she actually has a really good understanding of, which I was surprised. But again, I think it's a wonderful program. My only critique would be, well, there's, I guess, two. My only critique for it would be is the composition sometimes can be very vague. Like I said, I'm not a strong writer by nature. I just was not taught anything besides, you know, the introduction, the thesis statement, the three supporting facts and the conclusion. That's pretty much what my public school writing education was. So the composition would be vague sometimes. It doesn't hold your hand through it necessarily. And it's very clear in the book, it tells you it doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection is not the aim here, which is also I think very important. My daughter is a natural perfectionist. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's practice, it's honing in on those skills. So some of the compositions sometimes can be, it's little chunks broken up, which is easy, but sometimes I wish, I, I wonder if I am doing a good enough job making sure it should be where it should be, knowing that I lack those, some of those skills myself, so. And the other critique I would have is the grammar is very, 
but I think it <clears throat> breaks it down in a very manageable, easy, relatable way. I would like to see a little more expansion on that. And so for what I do is I actually combine this with Michael Clay Thompson. So we read some of the sections with this. So when we were talking about verbs and adverbs, we read that section in Michael Clay Thompson, which has really helped cement it, getting it from both perspectives. You don't necessarily need to do that at all. And then I guess my third critique is it, you know, goes over a lot of grammar rules and different things like that. So I ended up just going to teacher pay teachers to get some just visuals. So my daughter can look and see, you know, exactly what those things are again to just be reminded because we don't often use these in everyday language like, oh, what's an abstract now? <laughs> so right now we're going over the rules of plurals. So, and that can be confusing. So again, I just print these up to refresh her memory instead of having to flip back and she look through it again in the book. I have these available so she can refer back to it because again, a lot of this isn't, you're gonna read it once and remember it complete. So I'll give you another example of her composition work here. So sometimes the composition is broken into just a week, sometimes it's broken into two. So for example, she was doing, um, she, the composition was how, or what she wanted to be when you grow up. So she wanted to be a vet. That was day one, shows her topic. Day two, she had to think about different things you would do to become a vet. And they handled this very well in the composition. So the composition was what I want to be when I grow up. And this was nice because this was the hand-holding part. I enjoyed that it gives you specific questions to ask your child so they can really hone in on specific things like what do they need? How will you feel being that way? What's the best part of that? And again, same thing. She wrote her rough draft here. And then one of the days she would write her final draft using Canva. And again, it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. And she got to use her graphics and that was really fun. And for this one, she actually got to do an oral presentation. So for uh, myself, my daughter, and my husband, she gave this uh, presentation of, you know, what you have to do to become a vet and why she wants to do that. And it was just a really good experience. What I really like is that it's not always the same stuff. It's not the same exercises. It's not the same stuff you're covering all the time. It's different, it's fresh, and it's books that they can handle by themselves, which is wonderful. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below.